Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. It's October, and it's my favorite month because that means there's horror stuff everywhere. Scary movies, people start uh, thinking about scary costumes, all sorts of weird stuff shows up in the stores and ends up on TV. It's always been my favorite time of year. I grew up on my father's old Famous Monsters of Filmland magazines and uh, all the really classic Universal Studios horror movies, so Dracula and Frankenstein and the Invisible Man and the Wolfman and the Creature from the Black Lagoon and the Mummy, the, those old movies that, that kind of set the baseline for all the horror films that were to come and for a lot of other entertainment as well. And that's something that, that's always struck me as really interesting, is that from those roots, those early times in, uh, in filmmaking, uh, horror movies have been around. And in literature, horror has been a staple for a long time, even longer if you consider the horror elements of fairy tales and mythology. Uh, and that's some interesting stuff that I'm sure we'll talk about it at some other point. But as far as I'm concerned, I love horror because of what it's taught me about myself and the insight it's given me into human nature in general. What I have found is that if you start to explore what scares you, what makes you uncomfortable, what the world around you tells you you shouldn't be even thinking about, let alone looking into, you discover a lot of really interesting and useful things. Stuff in the horror genre has taught me a lot of valuable lessons. It's taught me that Monsters aren't necessarily born that way. When Dr. Frankenstein made his creation, that creation wasn't born evil. That creation became evil because of his experiences. And even then, evil's kind of a strong word. It's not that the creature itself wasn't an abomination to nature because, hey, dead body parts sewn together, brought back to life. Yeah, that's not a very natural thing at all. But the first thing the creature does is reach out to its creator. And the first thing its creator does is swat it away, hide, and then lock it up. Needless to say, that leads to a lot of problems later on. So monsters aren't always born that way. Sometimes they're made. Another of the classic universal monsters, the, the Wolfman. The, the Larry Talbot who becomes a wolf when the moon is full and goes and commits these horrible, horrible acts of, of mutilation and killing people and eating things that you really shouldn't be eating because in the morning you wake up covered in someone else's blood and you feel really bad about what went on. Now, the wolfman, or werewolves in general, depending on where in the horror genre you look at them, uh, are interesting creatures. Uh, and one of the things that I learned way back from that, that original wolfman uh, stuff is that just because you do bad things sometimes doesn't make you a bad person. Larry Talbot dedicated his life to trying to get rid of the monster inside of him, the part of him that he had no control over once it came out. And he went through some pretty extreme measures to try to stop himself from committing these horrible acts. And when he finally discovered that he couldn't really 
stop this change from happening, he let people know. But the lesson that I got out of that was that there's always a way to deal with the bad stuff inside of you. It's not always a pleasant way. It's not always a foolproof way. But it's always, there's always a way. And that's something that I learned from the Wolfman, of all places. Now, Dracula is another one of those classic monsters. And what I learned from Dracula is that pretty faces and pretty words can hide the real monsters in plain sight. There's no question that Dracula, as classically portrayed, is a pretty bad guy. He's manipulating people, he's forcing his will upon people, he, he's ruining lives on a regular basis. But he's kind of suave, he's kind of debonair, he has a way about him that people generally like. Well, those are the kind of people you often need to watch out for here in the real world. They're not vampires, per se, but they do have their own best interests at heart, no matter how much they make it sound like it's in your best interest to do what they say. So that was something that I learned from Dracula. Now, the mummy is a little bit of a weird one, because the big lesson in that is don't go poking around in Egyptian tombs and don't laugh too much at those curses when you see them. The more useful lesson, because I think we've got the whole don't rob tombs thing down at this point, maybe, uh, is that some things, some actions that you've taken in the past can come back and cause amazing problems, not just for you, but for everyone around you. And that's kind of what's at the heart of uh, any good curse, is that it's not just something that affects you. It's something that affects you and the people you care about. So it's all the more important to pay attention to what you've done and how you've done it and be aware that it can come back and cause problems. <laughs> and that's just a few of the things I I've learned from those classic horror films. Uh, there's a lot more uh, from Clive Barker's stuff, uh, fantastic uh, bunch of lessons about what fear can do to us, what, what we allow to happen in the name of pretending everything's okay, and the problems that our obsessions can cause. Uh, I'll talk about Clive Barker a bit more uh, at another time, but he's, he's another one. Stephen King, another more modern uh, horror icon. Uh, again, lots of interesting lessons in, in his stuff, if you care to see them. Uh, otherwise, uh, horror is just a big mess of blood and guts. But that's another reason I like it. I like the spectacle. A and there's nothing better for spectacle than some good horror films. I'll talk about more reasons why I love horror uh, as time goes on. But for right now, let's just stick with those lessons I learned early on from those classic black and white horror movies. They, they, they have stuck with me. Uh, they, they have encouraged me to be a better person because I don't particularly want to be a monster. And I think I've been relatively successful so far. Uh, no one's put a stake through my heart, uh, beaten me with a silver cane, or uh, collapsed an old castle on me. Uh, so I guess I'm pretty good. I guess I've done pretty good. So tell me, what are your favorite horror films? What lessons have you learned from horror films? What, what have you changed or grown in your life from exploring these dark corners, uh, these things that we're told to not look at? 
Tell me down in the comments. Uh, we'll start up a little conversation about that. Maybe we'll have a little fun, uh, talk about some of the uh, crazy stuff that goes on in horror films that we're really lucky doesn't happen in real life. So that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, what I had to say, found it interesting. If you did, uh, hit the like button uh, down there. If there's other people uh, you want to share this with because you think they have something to say, uh, yeah, go ahead, share this out. Uh, if you want to be notified every time a new one of these goes up, hit the subscribe button. You can have email notifications from YouTube sent right to you. And uh, if you want to hear about something specific, there's a link down in the description that will take you to a form on my website where you can tell me what you want me to talk about next. So that's it for today. I'm Kier, and uh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow.